So today we're talking about smart rings, and we're talking about them because some of the big tech companies have started to say they're going to do smart rings. I've been wearing a smart ring for you know quite a long time. I think I've been wearing them about five years, and they've been out longer than that. This is from a company called Ura, who's had the first kind of commercial rings available. And you may have seen people like Prince Harry was wearing one at some point. That was. So they've kind of been around a while, but suddenly the big tech companies are thinking smart rings might be a good wearable tech option for their portfolios. This is relatively big, and you might be able to see it's kind of on my hands hard to uh, close my fingers around it or not have it bang against other rings, so you have to choose carefully what, what finger you use. But they've got a range of sensors built in, and every time they release a new version, this is version 2 of theirs, I think, it's got slightly more sensors on the inside around the finger. What sorts of things can you do then? So like a watch, it tends to shine different kind of light through your, through your skin to look for like heart rate, body temperature. Um, the thing that a lot of them use the most is heart rate variability, which it can, it can detect. One of the things they're trying to do a lot is show whether or not you're stressed or whether you have a stress response in your body. Heart rate variability, I guess, is kind of uh, quite standard. They see the more that the variability increases, like they range of difference between each It's a rate of change? Or? If there's like a millisecond difference here between there and it changes a lot every heartbeat, every heart pulse, then it's, uh, that's when it's starting to say you've got higher levels of stress is kind of what they're inferring from it. But it could, it could mean lots of things. You could be just excited about something. It could be a roller coaster that you've seen and you're really excited about going on though. Uh, that's a very good point, yeah. If you, if you go for a run, then for the rest of the day, your heart rate variability is higher. So for the rest of the day, you might've seen some things like uh, the Garmin watch have got like a stress display yeah. and so you go for a run and then for the rest of the day your stress display is kind of higher. But that's just because your physiological response to that activity is it? Yeah it's like... But why, they, why have they not calibrated for that? I mean you, you expect that to be a simple thing to sort wouldn't you? Yeah it's because well so what people say is they want to reduce stress but that's very much a reflective or feeling experience of how you are and what the watches and rings can tell us is the stress response. Okay. And the stress response can be good. You know, if you could do something exciting, like you said, a roller coaster, you enjoyed it, your body's got a stress response on it, but you don't necessarily feel stressed. The problem with stress is it's kind of, I was gonna say it's a loaded term, but it's not an me easily measurable thing, is it? Or is it? Is it measurable? The stress response is measurable. Well, well yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's, what, that's my point. So stress itself is not measurable. No, not so easily. Uh, people obviously try, and there's lots of apps to help you track it. Like, but that's more of a kind of subjective, I feel stressed. We could do another video at some point on the companies where they've put a little button next to the employees to say, I feel stressed right now, uh, to see what employees did and that kind of. How many of those are placebo? <laughs> Just like a little plastic button doesn't do anything. I'd have to look into it again, but my memory was that it created a lot of backlash and people felt like uh, it wasn't good for their... <laughs> their work life. Well, actually seeing the button just sitting next to you yeah. all the time is perhaps like... And employees are like... <laughs> <laughs> so we've been looking into what these could do, and there's been loads of research in human-computer interaction as a research field to study what people might do with jewellery, smart jewellery, so there's been necklaces, bracelets, watches, rings. One thing they would say about rings is that you can wear multiple, multiple rings more easily, so you could have several rings on one finger or r rings on each hand, on each finger, and you might be able to tell more about it. So there's lots of research into gestures, interaction in VR, where they could track your fingers more carefully if you could see each bend of your finger and which angle it was. They're also looking at uh, how rings and watches might talk to each other. So one thing that's interesting, if you try and do an ECG on a watch, you kind of have to touch the watch with your right finger, and if, it's, if you're wearing it on your left hand, yeah. then it can do like a heart electricity pulse through your body. But in theory, you could do that without them being directly connected, if you could analyze it, and then you've got kind of connection between smart devices. What's also interesting in fingers is not being done at the moment, is you could give like haptic feedback to a finger. Um, so at the moment you get lots of vibrations in your watch telling you when you have a notification and if you're trying to give people feedback on what they're doing you could give feedback directly on 
different fingers if you're wearing them on multiple fingers. Well, so she could use it to help, I don't know, learn an instrument or something by... Yeah, that's a kind of exciting example because I guess things like uh, classical guitar, it's a lot all in the fingers without much in their wrists. So, I mean, I wear my watch on my left hand, but if you had your watch on your right hand, you could tell strumming better. But if you had sensors on every finger or on multiple fingers, you could detect finger position better. Guitar, piano could all become slightly more analyzed. I think the point is we use our fingers for quite a lot more things than we use our arm position. You can do quite big gestures with your arm. You could kind of figure out someone's pointing towards something in VR. But in things like the Vision Pro, they're interested in like pinch interactions. So suddenly you can do more interesting specifics. Not that cameras seem to be struggling too bad with it. And they figured out when you're doing a pinch, but maybe with detecting each finger with wearables, you could then start to figure out different finger pinches and whether that matters or multiple finger pinches, those things. One thing we thought about when we were discussing rings is uh, that rings often mean something mm -hmm. and they're often used a bit more stylishly and maybe that's something that, that companies might do more in the future is come up with different types of rings. Diamond rings, wedding rings, you know, these often have like a, they signify something to people and they're quite meaningful. So you might find that they become something that people attach more personal value to, which might be interesting to so know what would you do with your personal data if you gave someone a ring, you know, I can give you a ring and perhaps now I can track you slightly better as a, as a person in a relationship. Oh, tenuous, isn't it? No. Yeah, I don't know. It's interesting to know what they would do with it. Um, as, as they shrink, maybe, it, that yeah. it could be used a bit more surreptitiously, I suppose. But. You might find companies that focus more on style and like aesthetics and products might make smart rings that are more designery or we'll collaborate with companies to produce smart wedding rings you know one thing that they talk about with intimacy in smart wearables is what you could do to communicate via it kind of subtly for people who are far away so there's been lots of things like maybe you've seen on smart watches where you can tap your finger on the watch and then it like if you've got both fingers on it then sends your heartbeat to somebody else oh, okay. it's kind of like a romantic thing yeah, okay. if a rings are more of a romantic thing what's the kind of battery implications of a ring like that Good question. So this one used to last about a week um, and you would get a good load of data and just have something by your bed, you'd only charge it every now and then. Now it's a few years old, the battery life isn't lasting as long. I kind of have to charge it more often and it's hard. One thing you don't get if you don't have a screen, because this has a screen, it tells me you're running out of battery. Is This doesn't tell me it's running out of battery. I kind of have to check it every now and then with my phone. So this is the Spire Stone that came out. It was quite a while ago actually, it was maybe 10 years ago. And it was a, it's a little thing you wear on your waistband or on your bra strap, but it's designed to track your breathing. Mm -hmm. So this was also trying to do stress in particular. Stress was what they were interested in. And they, the assumption there was that breathing rate is also a thing to do with stress. So if you are stressed, you start to breathe more shallow. Um, of course, there's lots of reasons you breathe shallow, but that was the main assumption. If you wanted to track stress, yeah. you, could, uh, you could put this on and it would kind of sit down here as you were breathing. It would just sort of subtly check your breathing rate and then beep at you when you were stressed. I think beeping at me to tell me I was stressed would make me more stressed. It was very interesting, yeah. It would be like if I was preparing... It's like measuring the quantum thing affects you. Know, it's <laughs> like a bit like that. Yeah. yeah, it would say like every couple of minutes, you're stressed, do you want to take a break right now? And I was like, well, I'm preparing for a lecture. I'm going to be giving a lecture soon. <laughs> for example, if I was leaning against the sink while washing up, it would think I was stressed because I was... It was affecting my breathing depth because I was leaning against the sink. Yeah, okay. So that would be like, you're stressed right now. I was like, I'm really not. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just washing up. <laughs> you know, yeah, this is like my nice relax. to take a break from the washing up, but <laughs> it still needs to be done. Yeah, that's kind of more of a meditation thing if you wanted to be, you know, washing up could be actually quite relaxing. But yeah, this is the problem with all these in that they, anything you have, it's assuming something pro might indicate something like stress. They're trying to infer things from... Yeah, other yeah, things happening with your body, right? But there could be all sorts of reasons that in the end that affect it. So it was interesting though, fun to try for a bit, interesting to learn about yourself from. And that's the sort of same thing with the sleep tracking and the, and the activity tracking with different wearables is you try it for a bit and does it help you learn something? Well, you were saying before about possibly, you know, ring working in conjunction with a watch. Do you think kind of the more sensors, the more devices, if, you know, you get a more holistic view of what's going on, then perhaps they'll be inferring things in a better way. My guess is that's why some of the big tech companies do want to, to add more wearables, is that they've got more points of reference and more points of cross-reference, and then perhaps from that they can tell it's not stress, but it is something else, or it is stress and not something else, and then maybe at that point it's more useful for people. But again, probably 
needs a lot more machine learning, a lot more data processing to figure that out. And I would argue that for most people, the smartphone is wearable anyway, because the yeah, for, I've, yeah. I've, made, I've not got any data on this, but I think most people have it in the pocket. I think, well, I, I, I don't know if it's unfair to say most men do. What's interesting about my wife is that her, her watch is the only thing that tracks her steps accurately because her phone is usually not on her person. Yeah, fair point. But it is for me. I've now got this that tracks steps, this that tracks steps, my phone that tracks steps. So it should be pretty damn accurate by now. One of the problems and one of the confusions is that people call these things large language models which makes you think that they Cat kind of talk style. like a person. And then if you put do in a, in a minus box. T as a flag and then put in the hash, then it will tell you what the type of that object is. The fastest way to get...